Welcome everyone to this special edition of the Doorstep Podcast taking place on the sidelines of the Newport Global Summit, which is a gathering of business and investment and thought leaders coming together uh, to assess directions that the future may take and ways in which uh, we can solve the problems of today uh, with uh, new and innovative solutions uh, for a better tomorrow. Uh, we are starting with uh, an assessment uh, of the state of the world and then asking people to uh, speak a bit about their individual presentations here uh, at uh, the Global Summit. So uh, perhaps uh, I could turn first uh, to you, Peter, uh, to give us a rundown of current geopolitics, and then I'll invite everyone else to uh, give their uh assessments of where we are, where we're going, and uh, things that our listeners should be looking out for. Uh, good afternoon, friends. It's uh, Brigadier General Retired Peter Swack. Um, I'm speaking um, with a orientation on uh, what is going on with uh, Russia and Ukraine. But what this conference does brings all the elements of, uh, of this, what people sometimes call regional conflict, how the fact that it, it, it touches every corner of our world diplomatically, uh, socially, uh, philosophically, uh, economically, morally, and um, focusing, uh, and, and, I, um, and, and this is what the great benefit of all these thought leaders here. M my main focus was trying to, to enhance uh, perspective um, uh, and understanding on the uh, on what I would call the the um, the the tragic heroism of Ukraine, the aggression, uh, many many adjectives to describe it. Um, I started my discussion about uh, this extraordinary uh, uh, raid or mutiny in Russia two months ago led by uh, warlord Yevgeny Prigozhin, and serendipitously, a few hours ago, it looks like he went down in an airplane between Moscow and St. Petersburg. So talk about confluence of, uh, of um, activities, thought, uh, and I will let the others uh, speak. Bottom line, Ukraine, it's a long slog, uh, philosophically, um, I just, uh, and I think many would agree that uh, that there, this is much bigger than just the fighting on the sideline. There are bigger, bigger issues at stake, place in the world. Who are we? What are we? Um, um, uh, if, if, if we don't continue the support, that's a whole other discussion. Uh, great session. Well, and where the world may be headed, I'll start turning uh, to some of the other speakers who had their own perspectives on where things are going. Yeah, this, this is Eddie Zwayer. I'm the uh, Chief Investment Officer of 33 Capital Management. We're an asset management firm uh, focused on managing uh, capital in transitions. I, uh, I took a little bit about um, the multipolar world that uh, uh, Peter and uh, Professor Nicholas talked about. I said, well, well, how do you invest in it? The basic premise is that uh, we are transitioning from a unipolar world, which is a world we all lived in from 1989, really through 2018, to a multipolar world. It's the way the world used to run prior to World War II and the past. And, and, and that is inherently, first and foremost, inflationary. And um, uh, inflation uh, really comes, as Steve eloquently has described uh, in the past in two forms. You know, there is the goods and service inflation, the inflation of the real economy. And when you have a multipolar world, there's competition for supply and um, there's a lot of demand and supply and demand are constrained and therefore you need higher prices. And then there's really the monetary uh, part of inflation, whereby in order to barter or purchase goods and supplies, and keep them away from the other person, uh, we use currencies and bonds as weapons. And that creates inflation if you are not stringent. So uh, it's, it's not a bad world, it's a different world. So it's not, I wasn't trying to be uh, gloom and doom. I just felt that um, 
one has to invest differently than one has in the last 15 years, primarily by looking outside the United States for uncorrelated opportunities of growth, and also being able to ensure that whatever you're investing in, you're getting your cost of capital back. I think that's very important. So uh, this is Todd Rupert. There were a lot of discussions today about innovation occurring around the globe. And to continue on your theme, Eddie, that there is a lot of great innovation happening in a lot of different areas. AI, deep tech, synthetic biology, the food, energy, and water shortages and dealing with those. And I, to your point, I think there's a uh, very good scope to be finding opportunities in private companies located outside of the United States. So a venture capital portfolio, which is where more of this innovation occurs, should be globally diversified. Yes, I'm Philip Howard. I'm chair of a nonprofit called Common Good and write books about the structure of government. Um, uh, I spoke about the operating systems of government and how uh, as much as there is innovation in the society, we also need to deliver basic goods and services. The trains need to run on time, the schools need to work and such. And instead, schools get worse and worse, uh, public services get more and more inefficient, and no one seems to be able to do anything about it. It's, uh, the government seems impervious to political reform. And the reason for that, I argue in um, a new book called Not Accountable, is that public employee unions have seized legal control over the operating machinery of government so that holding someone accountable is impossible. Creating a spirit of, of public service is very difficult in those situations. Work rules mandate inefficiencies to government. Many agencies limp along at half half of capacity or worse. And we're never going to solve it politically because the public employee unions have become by far the largest and most dominant single interest group in this political system. So I'm arguing that there should be a constitutional challenge. I'm Jane Pointa, founder and co-CEO of Space Perspective. And we are opening up space to unprecedented numbers of people. We're doing that by using a technology that is completely different from what you would normally see. We're using a space balloon that allows people to go very gently, safely to space. You go to space 12 miles an hour in a space lounge. Um, what is really interesting and important about this is that we're at the beginning of a new industry. We're literally witnessing the birth of a new industry, as we are of many industries today. There's a lot of new industries really coming to fruition now. And that's what's happening with space travel. If you wind your mind back to what the beginning of air travel was like, people could not imagine that how would we we would be using airplanes today they simply could not get their heads around it and we're in that same stage today with space travel well, this is john Masurvi. i'm a private advisor to america's leading families i've worked with about 440 high wealth and older high wealth families around the world this conference this wonderful newport global summit i was asked to talk about legacy a word that we often bat around ubiquitously and uh, I was able to tackle this topic with uh, some personal interest. I thought that it was critical that we make an investment also in ourselves, and legacy is one way to do that. The idea is that we create something that actually will last beyond you. And we have the question, we have a choice. Do we want to leave a legacy or do we just want to, uh, as one client said, am I just taking up space on this earth? So I looked at this and said, well, we can't out-legacy each other. It's not competitive. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to be famous. You can be alone. You can be an heir. You can be smart. You don't have to be any of those things or all of those things to leave your own personal legacy. It is things that matter. Your family legacy then becomes who you loved and how you loved them. So I ask and I quote Andy Warhol. I think in one of the best, one of the best descriptions of legacy, the idea is not to live forever but to create something that will. And finally, I'd like to turn to Mr. Steve Forbes, our keynote speaker for today. You have been an observer of 
American business, global business, the government. You've watched and charted trends. Uh, from your perspective today, what would you want to leave uh, participants in the summit, but more importantly to the larger audience as to things that they might expect or concerns you may have or warnings you'd like to give or uh, a word of optimism? Uh, up to you. Well, what's come out of this uh, conference is uh, there's no lack of ideas, no lack of innovation uh, in moving ahead. Problem is we have uh, political problems and geopolitical problems, monetary problems, tax problems that are standing in the way. I think in the next uh, 18 months, a lot of those obstacles are going to be removed. And we're going to have once again a roaring 20s. Uh, the 1920s were one of the most innovative decades, huge advance in the standard of living. Houses went from outhouses to indoor plumbing and the like. And I think uh, we uh, see the uh, foundations of that here at this conference, whether it's in healthcare or uh, other aspects of life. So uh, let's get the changes, whether it's with the uh, government itself or uh, the policies governments pursue or don't pursue. But uh, I think uh, after 2024, uh, we're going to have a very different world than uh, what we have today. It won't happen overnight, but people sense the trend is going the right way. I'd like to thank all of our, our speakers. And just to close, it reminds me, uh, in 1993, AT&T issued a series of ads called You Will. Uh, and it projected what the world of 2018 might look like. Uh, we were just at the beginning of the digital revolution, uh, and they got most of it right, not all of it. And I think that uh, we are at a similar starting point today where uh, these trends that we've all discussed here today, these uh, innovations, uh, the, the roadblocks and where we have these dis uh, dysfunctional parts, uh, and maybe with uh, the optimism that they'll be uh, changed or modified, uh, really that the... Uh, world of the future, particularly for the younger listeners of this podcast, uh, just as those of us that remember the 1989 to 1992 period as a period of immense change, geopolitical, uh, technological, and so on, uh, that we might be at the cusp of a similar uh, new uh, change in global order. So I'd like to thank you all and to thank uh, Kitty Cushing, the organizer of the Newport Global Summit. And uh, just to the audience uh, to uh, have given you a chance to uh, add a virtual peek uh, into what we've been discussing here in Newport over the last day and a half. Thank you.